Greetings, my fellow vaulters, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to a brand new series of Vanilla RimWorld version 1.4 with the Biotech DLC enabled called Doomsday Vault. If you'd like to skip the overview, please use YouTube chapters. Episode 1, RimWorld Fallout Shelter. RimWorld Doomsday Vault is a series about a family of settlers who purchased a one-way ticket to a new world, only to arrive at an apocalyptic wasteland. Their only choice is to build an underground homestead where they'll be protected from the polluted and toxic atmosphere, as well as the marauding bands of wasters. Without the means to buy passage to another world, they're settling to start families and make the best of a bad situation. The rules are pretty straightforward. Uh, we are gonna have to live only where it is unpolluted, and we won't be traveling over polluted terrain unless we're protected. There is no cannibalism. Oh, come on now. Uh, there is no cannibalism or human butchery. We're not going to be using a lot of land reclamation. There are texts to be able to remove pollution, but I won't be touching them unless it's a special circumstance. And uh, no building outdoors. Goals to expand the family to three generations and to acquire enough technology and resources to return to the stars. The scenario is a modified crash landed for six people of three couples. That way we can avoid some incest, I think, I hope. Uh, Randy Random strive to survive. So the reason it's on a bit easier difficulty is because this series is going to be about family building and not so much about being bloodthirsty, murdering whatevers, you know, so easier difficulty. Uh, the ideology that we have is very basic collectivist. All the DLCs are enabled. There is only waster, civil outlander, and insectoid factions. There's no mechs. There's no royalty. None of that. This is a crummy little planet that nobody really took an interest in. And mods is only the color-coded move bar and no time change sounds. So here we are. Uh, this is the map tile. And Remthep, uh, Remethep, thank you for the, the raid. Let me give you an old school shout out because uh, I don't have my macro set up, but welcome. I'm assuming you were playing biotech as well. So yeah, the intro, and you guys came in at a perfect time. We are on a crummy little planet. And let me show you that. It is, I basically generated a planet of 100% pollution. So it's a very polluted little planet. And this is our map tile. There is a new pollution overlay here, and you can see where it is polluted. And if you're wondering, standing on pollution, you'll slowly acquire toxic buildup. Um, it builds up about 20% slower than it normally would in vanilla RimWorld, but uh, with the new update, there is also ways to protect yourself from it. And I'm going to be building in this mountain. Um, the starting characters, we have Kadath, Brawler, Tough, Iron Willed, Plants, Mining, Construction, Melee. And he is in a relationship, a fiancé, with Tech Noir. Tech Noir, quick sleeping, very neurotic, sanguine, social, intellectual, medicine, art. We've got Shay, undergrounder, great memory and hard worker, crafting, social mining. And she is engaged to S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. is bloodlust, jogger, nimble, shooting, cooking plants. Uh, Cam, industrious, fast learning, optimist, uh, medical construction. And she is, of course, engaged to Sappo. Sappo is kind, steadfast, and super immune. Animal, social, whole bunch of stuff in there. Every single one is a baseliner. Every single one does not have any special genes or anything like that. Just your basic hair color, skin color. Um, and then, in terms of factions, I did tell you. Um, the insect faction is, of course, hidden. But there's three waster factions. Virus Army, Toxoid Gang, and Venom Psychers. And then the Nation of Nalm. Uh, which is a civil outlander union. And then, of course, the hidden insects. And this is our lovely super polluted map tile, where there are toxalopes and waster rats and all sorts of mutated um, creatures. And really, not a whole lot else, except for, of course, the ancient exostrider midsection, which, when you destroy it, you get a me mechanoid transponder to call in mech bosses to destroy if you're trying to be a mechanator. All right, let's uh, let's start. I did start us off with the typical colony food, a lot of meds and food. But of course, 
it's going to be a little tricky to try to get set up. Uh, so I am going to allow all. And then let's do work priorities real quick. So there's, of course, new work priorities. The, the child care work priority, uh, which is essentially just social. Uh, but the higher skill that you have, the better outcomes you are going to have trying to entertain and educate children. And we'll get into that um, sooner or later, I think. And let's see. Construct. Mine. Craft. And research. So everybody kind of has a specialty. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to start to mine into the mountain. So I'm going to mine here. And again, this is the pollution overlay. So I'm trying to avoid going anywhere where it is polluted. Uh, as that would be against the rules. And I'm going to go down 46 tiles. Uh, sniper rifles are what? Like 45 range? 44.9? So, 46 tiles is like the range of a sniper rifle. Um, and that will be the start. And I'm going to actually start to plan out an underground complex as time goes on. Uh, so, the other thing I want to do is to accumulate our goods uh, waiting sort of in a queue here. Uh, so that we can start putting it inside. Because I'm not allowed to build outside. That is against the rules. Um, the next thing I wanted to do is let's set up a zone so that we don't... Uh, go outside of it, basically staying where it is not polluted. Now, eventually, when we have um, detoxify our organs or gas masks, uh, we can venture a little bit more into the uh, dangerous biome areas here. But for now, we're going to play it very safe because we don't want to end up like the wasters we've read about, where they have black skin and all they want to do is raid other people and and destroy communities and you know that's not that's not us we're we're family builders so let's not do that all right there we go so that is the allowable area and i'm going to schedule them to it uh as far as weapons go kadath is a brawler so gun or a uh, knife technoir you have no combat skills so knife uh sapo or cam you are a fast learner, I'm going to give you a bolty. Shield, you are a bloodlust jogger, I'm going to give you a bolty. Sapo, a gun. Shea, a gun. Good. Uh, the next thing is, in this not toxic polluted area, I can actually grow some stuff. So I'm going to grow some potatoes. I'm not allowed to build outside, but I am allowed to farm outside. I'm not planning on having a farm outside uh, permanently, because quite likely the animals of this biome are going to eat my crop, as there's just not a lot to eat in the uh, super polluted areas. There's just not things to graze upon, as you can see, not a lot of berries. So if I uh, rely upon farming outside, they're just gonna eat my crop and well, that wouldn't be good for me in the long run. So, going to avoid that. Uh, next up, I want to get some stone cutters. So I'm gonna make steel stone cutters because I perceive wood to be a relatively scarce and precious resource. There's not a lot of opportunities to get wood on this map tile. Would a fence be considered building? Yes. It's a structure, is it not? Any structures not allowed. That means no geothermal geysers, no windmills, no solar panels, nothing built outside. No exceptions. We're undergrounders now. For the most part. All right, can. Cam is going to start building for us. And yeah, all of these uh, people here currently are trying to avoid pregnancy. Uh, one of the strategies that I have is I would like to get to a point where we are living comfortably in order to have kids. Because if we start to have babies now, uh, they're going to be pretty righteously messed up. Because I don't have the capacity to really care for them. I don't have food security or literal security or any of that jazz. So uh, we are going to have them avoid children for now which is in the social tab and you can click here to avoid pregnancy, try for a baby or normal. So right now we're avoiding pregnancy. It's not fail safe. We still might get pregnant or at least the women in the, uh, in the, in the group might get pregnant, but at least I'm trying to avoid it. And that's for the benefit of all of us. I also feel like the music is a little loud. So my plan is to build into this mountain and 
let me uh, start to draft up a plan. So once they come down here, I want a line of sight breaker like that. And then this dumps into an 11 because you can't go any wider than that by SMGs are 23 range or just shy of 23 range. So let's do 21. So 11 by 21. And this is going to be somewhat of the quote unquote kill box. And then I'd also very much like um, hallways, corridors, kind of like all around in order to be able to pop into the kill box whenever we want. Uh, one of the things that they introduced in this is a whole lot of new ways to fight fires. But I am also going to want to engineer this to be a wee bit more fireproof than default. Um, then let's go like 11 by 11, and this can be a kitchen. And then we'll have like 11 by 11 dining room. Um, yeah. What do you think so far? That's, I mean, this is a little... It's a lot of of progress, but I do we we do have a lot of miners, so I feel somewhat comfortable about um, sprawling, going big. Uh, right next to the uh, kill box here, uh, one of the things that I think everybody knows that we're going to need is storage, a storeroom, uh, because we're going to get a lot of stuff off of uh, off of the people that we kill. I missed a hydrate. I missed everything, man. I missed everything. Cheers. I'm still sort of having to tinker with the volume here a little bit. Not exactly sure what's perfect. All right, we're going to go with a limestone door with walls. Kind of basic, obvious. And that's to block out, uh, you know, manhunters or whatever comes for us. Uh, looks to me like... We are just about done with the potato plants. Uh, so what I could try to do is to grow other things. I think it wouldn't hurt to get some... some um, let's go with heel root. And then some dyes. Some tinctoria. As there's a lot of new things that you can dye colors. Which is cool. So let me try to label these. Uh, we're going to go with a storeroom. So that will have a little S. And then uh, this will be the kitchen. So a K. Well, like a big K. There. Uh, weird K, because I'm really bad at pixel art. Uh, this will be a dining room. And of course, this all might change as I dig into the mountain. I don't really know... Uh, I don't really know what it all looks like inside. Uh, there are some strategies here. One of the strategies would be to try to avoid overhead mountain, because if you avoid, or, or rather avoid thin rock roof, because if you avoid thin rock roof, um, you negate the possibility that you get pod droppers, uh, directly into your base, which I think would be pretty nice to have. So this is going to be a ritual room. Uh, doesn't look like the details are working. I think that's because I've set the wrong permissions for it. So I'll correct that in a moment. All right. The other thing we're going to want in here is some bedding. So uh, we have three couples. I'm going to do three double beds. So we'll get Cam to start uh, getting that going for us in a second. All right, let's see. Details is working. Or apparently, I mean, it should be. Yeah, it works for me. It's on a 30 second cooldown, so it can't be spammed. So if it doesn't look like it's working, it's because, you know, it only works once every 30 seconds. Um, the, one of the new things that you can do is you can build research benches and, and stuff like that out of stone. So I'm going to do a sandstone research bench to preserve resources that we aren't going to want to waste.
And we're eating without a table, so I'm already committing war crimes. I was wondering how long that would take. And someone vomited all over our potatoes. Uh, the other thing that I was going to do is up here, this is deep water. So one of the advantages of this map layout is there is the ability to have like a bit of a deep water um, shooting range. And eventually I'm going to mine that out so that if there's any mana hunters congregating on our front door, uh, we can clear them out. And then this will also act as a heat escape if we have a fire in the base so that we can vent it really, really, really quickly. Um, then I'm going to put a workshop here next to the storeroom. And this storeroom can expand east and as can the workshop. So if uh, I need more room, you know, I can annex it. That's supposed to be a W. Yeah, that's as close as to a W as you're going to get out of me. And we're starting to get beds, but poor? Really? All right, I'm going to force these guys to start working. So those miners, uh, Kadath, Shay, and Sapo, let's have you coming back here and, you know, actually, actually do the thing that uh, we need you to do. Cam's working on the beds so that at least we sleep indoors tonight. All right, that's a normal one. I might try for um, everybody having nicer beds than what we currently have. Eventually. All right, area one. I don't want to get too close to the eastern wall here because this area here, I, I don't want to promote sappers coming through. You know, trying to avoid that. So I got to be careful how to expand. And then down here, I would say we'll start to get uh, bedrooms. So we can put, um, let's say, seven by sevens, because that's nice and comfortable. And then we're going to need things like um, off of the kitchen here, grow light areas. So that will be hydroponics. And more hydroponics. And we'll start with two. And that's near the kitchen and dining room. So that's pretty convenient. It's not near the storeroom. But if I have mostly vegetables, we can uh, aim for the vegetables to keep pretty well. So that they don't spoil. All right, maybe we go for one more bedroom. Or one more bed here. To get rid of the crummy one that we have. And welcome everybody in the chat. Thanks for all the stuff in the activity feed. I uh, certainly am not going to be able to catch... Oh, okay. That's a really crummy one. So let's not sleep there. I'll probably have to assign beds, shield shay, Kadath, Technowire. No, no, they did it themselves. Sapo, you want to go to sleep? It is a 300 by 300 map. I basically, that's my default. All right. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is, even though wood is a bit of a commodity, I am going to set up this research bench here and then build like a little wall here uh, so that I can enclose this area and clean it up so we can start to do research and it will be illuminated. Uh, do okay. Let's avoid berries, raw food. Nope. And dumping stockpile, for now, I'll put it uh, here. Yeah, there's a lot of other new features. Like, one in particular is uh, corpses make you sick. So we're going to have to work to avoid uh, corpse rot. Because that's going to be pretty gnarly. We don't want to get lung rot or anything like that. Could I run a freezer? Um, I could run a freezer in here. I, I don't think I'll be doing that, though. But we'll see if it's necessary. 
I'm not going to be answering too many questions that ask way far in advance. I'm just just playing the next, you know, 20 minutes at a time. So don't ask me about what tomorrow is. So initially, I think I'm going to push for hydroponics. Or battery. Both. They kind of go hand in hand. There's a lot of new research options. And they're also color-coded. So yellow is royalty. And then you have this sort of reddish orange is ideology. And then biotech is this uh, blue tinge here for biotech. So some of the new biotech stuff can be found in xenogenetics, tox gas, death rest, toxifier generator, fertility procedures, basic mech tech, standard high and ultra mech tech, game, gene processors, arco genetics, uh, waste pack anima, uh, atomizers, atomizers, and then toxin filtration. So those are the, the big research ones. And then there's also new tech prints, new things like tech prints, uh, which is required to make certain things. Like for instance, the waste pack atomizer requires a, a special component that you're only gonna get from um, high-tech mechs. All right, Cam, let's, yeah, you know, you just keep going, it's fine. Keep chopping up those stones. So this is a relatively clean area for the most part to speed up the research. And we hit one steel node here, but I'm looking at another one here as well. We're also gonna need rec variety. And then the other thing I'm gonna do with maybe sandstone is to build some shelving so that we can move the our stuff indoors. And I'm sure I'm gonna be moving these shelves again and again and again. Um, these are not the permanent locations, but this is just so that we can not have anything decay. And then at the bo back bottom of this, um, maybe here, I'll start to set up uh, sandstone furniture for recreation. That is a good amount of work. And yes, we're, we're essentially living in a mining tunnel until we excavate a little further. So taking a look at this, I think um, once we get inside, I am going to beeline it uh, with like a two by two tunnel, beeline it to where I want the hydroponics. And then next to the hydroponics, uh, I might also need to place somewhere in this design uh, where we're going to have power. I'll figure that out in a minute, but have like wood fire generators or something like that. All right, so yeah, the other thing that we could do is to start to... Oh, yep, yeah, we're already doing it. No, we're not. We're eating. But I'm going to queue up these three to haul meals onto that shelf uh, so we can start bringing the meals inside. And someone didn't do it. Oh, so this stockpile zone is going to be low, so we start pulling the meals inside. There we go. Because, of course... Everything will eventually deteriorate. Oh, fail. If you're wondering how I'm uh, planning on avoiding bugs, I never said I was planning on avoiding bugs. All right, I think I am going to have Kadath uh, do a little bit of caravan hauling for some of the more sensitive stuff that I don't want rotted. Because I really only have to move it in once. And then it's good. I guess he's full up. And we'll sort the rest of that uh, later. Oh, we have a little Aurora. If we can see the... Are we, what, in the north? I don't even know if we're northern or southern. Uh, northern. If we can see the northern lights through all this uh, toxic garbage. 
All right, looks like everyone else is asleep, so I'm going to have Kadath undraft here in just a second. There we go. All right, Yoda Cam will be unpaused. Is there any adverse effects to eating polluted animals? Uh, we'll have to find out, won't we? Some of these animals, um, they are... So I'll read this to you. A pollution-adapted cousin of the boomalope, the toxalope grows to uh, toxic pouches on its back. When it dies, the toxic material explodes and produces a deadly toxic cloud. Unlike the boomalope, the toxalope cannot be milked. Right? Some of these animals are just not worth really hunting because they are more poison than sustenance. There are some traditional rats and raccoons out here. Uh, but they're few and far between, and that's pretty slim pickings as far as uh, food goes. Where are the bugs? So, let's see. There are some insectoids here. And that might be the only cave. Yeah, I think that might be the only cave. So right there. All right, we are getting almost to the larger corridor. So that's exciting. I feel like I've been digging away at that for a while. We have some seating, and then I think it wouldn't hurt to throw in a, uh, a torch here. Adding a little bit more light. That's okay. You fail at constructing sandstone stuff. Methinks there's going to be more sandstone. Oh, look at them go. Ooh, found more steel. Steel's going to be real nice when we need to put together um, hydroponic basins and generators and the like. To make it symmetrical, I'll put uh, an entryway into the kill box here, and I'll probably stagger it so that there's more spaces to poke our heads out as well. But looking good. And I hit more compacted steel. Perfect. And I wouldn't mind also diverting a little bit of manpower to start digging out dining as well. And then eventually get down to where the bedrooms are going to be. I'm going to move the... The bedroom... Um, entry doors... Like that. And that's just about at the edge of the map tile. I have not yet hit any thin rock roof. Got it wondering about that. So most of our valuable stuff is now inside. Except for, of course, the stone cutters. And I can start moving those stone cutters uh, into the tunnel ways and then maybe pairing them with a... Uh, with tool benches. Because we're likely to have a lot of steel. I don't think steel is going to be something that we're scarce on. Um, take a look at this. Let's see here. I am going to try to put down a few more crops. Now, the reason why I'm not making a ton of farming out here 
is I I suspect that it might not survive. I'm 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 not trying to invest too much time in growing because there's a lot of events that happens when you're in a highly heavily polluted area, and those events um, like to kill your crops. So if you're wondering, hey, why aren't you, you know, planting everywhere where you can plant? It's because I I don't think it will survive. I don't mind the additional attempt at uh, farming skill, but I don't think it will survive. Hey, Ascendancy, thank you for the raid. Welcome. You're here just in time. We're right at the start. Cheers. So if you ask what causes pollution, um, pollution is... So there's two types of things that could be considered pollution. One is rotted corpses. Rotted corpses will harm you if you're around them. It's not technically pollution, but it will cause disease. So you have to avoid uh, rotted corpses, which means you have to burn them, you have to eat them and butcher them, you have to bury them, something. You have to do something with them or it will get you sick. Um, but pollution is caused by things like the toxifier generator. So the toxifier generator here generates power and produces pollution as a result uh, around it. Sort of like a moisture pump, but, you know, making pollution around it instead. Um, other things that pr produce pollution primarily is mechanoids. There's a lot of this mech stuff here that will also produce pollution. And then you have to deal with the pollution. And there's a bunch of different ways to deal with the pollution. You can physically remove it as a zone. But then you're, you you're end up left with um, waste packs, like toxin pollution packs. And you have to do something with those packs or the pollution just goes right back into the environment where you could try to like send it to people or something. I mean, you can't just let it sit there. So um, that is a bit of a concern because we don't want to generate more pollution. So one of the rules is that we're not doing a lot of land rec reclamation. And one of the uh, requirements that I'm going to have for us is the only land reclamation we're ever going to consider is when we have a waste pack atomizer. I'm not going to make pollution to to this uh, this planet, even if we can export it, because the idea is that these colonists want to try to set up this place as um, a place for their kids and grandkids. And you don't, you know, you don't make a greener future by polluting everywhere. Take note, corporations. I'm not on your side. So, yeah, we'll be avoiding that. All right, so I've eaten about uh, 42 meals already. We have found no thin rock roof, which is kind of nice. And hydroponics is now done. Hydroponics, I would say, needs to be paired with battery um, because the sunlight is not always on. And without a battery, you either have to generate way more power. You have to generate power for the peaks or, yeah, whatever. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um get that uh that uh, research done but what i'm going to do is have you vote on next research so what type of research should i prioritize or pursue uh, that will be left up to you so we have defenses and armaments like smithing and machining research like sterile materials and microelectronics colonists recreation psychoid brewing music television that kind of stuff fertility and genetics i will say with fertility and genetics um that probably comes in a little bit more later when we have a more stable colony uh, I'm not really going to throw um, fertility and genetics research. I'm not going to be using that for a bit. Uh, power, biofuel refining, and toxifier generator. Now, I am not going to be using the toxifier generator, I don't think, but, um, but biofuel is maybe a good way for us to power our base or other advanced lights, fire foam, packer survival meals, etc. That kind of stuff. So have you all voted on that? That's not what I meant. So down here, the plan is to put a sunlight in this room. Which means I'm probably going to want quick open doors in this room as well. Uh, because it will have to separate out to this kitchen. And let me start mining out the kitchen region as well. I would like to start moving all our beds uh, further and deeper into the mountain. And I'm also going to get rid of the stockpile there and place the stockpile for now in this corridor. 
Although that is not a permanent location. None of this is permanent locations. Everything is in flux and to be to be done. All right. For now, we can leave this door propped open. And I think, let's see, if I wanted to power things up, the ritual room is not going to have a lot of flammables. So maybe I have a power room here. Yeah. All right, that works. And it looks to me like you guys want uh, biofuel refining as a next research, which I am good with. All right, that looks nice and sewn. It is um, another thing to note is the map tile that we live on has a extreme pollution of 100% by design, but also a grow season of about 30 days. So I can't grow year round. And then I'm also probably don't need that much space for the initial power room. So I'll just have it be uh, smaller. I don't I don't think we'll ever really need an 11 by 11, but who knows. Uh, and then let's mine our way to the bedrooms and start to set up bedrooms. Just following the plan. Yeah, or, or alternatively, hey Tusky, what's up? Alternatively, uh, over here next to the workshop, I can have uh, power here instead. There we go. I like that. It's a little bit far from where we're going to be using the power, but I'll just run cables out through the mountain for now. Um, and then eventually nest them into the walls. So far, our stuff has not been eaten, which is kind of nice. I'm going to queue up some um, wood cutting. Now, for your information, the trees around here that are twisted and toxified uh, do produce a little bit of wood, but not that much. So harvest yield eight. Versus like harvest yield uh, 46. So you can, in a pinch, uh, for deforest the polluted forest. But it's going to be a lot of work for very little yield. There's a few pockets of um, unpolluted forest down here. But I don't have any protection. And it's against the rules to go through wandering around the toxic wasteland without protection. So won't be doing that. But what I will be doing is running power around the base a bit. Ugly in our, along the floors, but yes, around the base. I don't have show drafty weapons. This is vanilla now. Uh, so if you go into your options here and go into interface, weapons below portrait is now a vanilla option, and you can turn it on to always, never, or while drafted. So... This is entirely vanilla, and show draft your weapons is now a totally obsolete mod if you're 1.4 or or later. Yeah. Oh, oh, thin rock roof. Gotta avoid that. Uh, so batteries just got researched, and you guys wanted biofuel. And I'm gonna start on that, and then I'm gonna have you guys select next research. So there it is again. You're welcome, Toolman, for all the content. My pleasure. Where are you going? Oh, uh, you're cutting down trees. All right, so we have a little bit of thin rock roof here, but that actually might work to my advantage if I want to vent things out to outside. I'm trying to, again, just to repeat myself, avoid thin rock roof so that I can not fall victim to drop pod raids. If I'm underground, I might as well reap the benefits of being underground. 
The benefits of being under Overhead Mountain means that uh, no one can drop pod raid you. The disadvantages is bugs. So I'm obviously stuck underground, right? Like, that much is clear. So I might as well just avoid um, pod drop raids altogether because avoiding bugs is going to be really difficult unless we want to make it really cold. And I don't really want to make it really cold. I'm trying to avoid that. Um, for this room, let's just cut straight through the center. I don't really need to go around the edge. Yeah, um, because this is attached, I can have freezers if I want to reveal uh, whatever's on the other side of the thin rock roof. Because it might be bad. I mean, who knows, right? Who knows? I can also mine this. Oops, that's lumberjack. I can mine this way as well. I feel like uh, I do feel like a, like I'm an ant or something. So this is a pretty good amount of wood that we have as a result of the trees that um, spawned around us initially. I can also go for these timber shrooms if I wanted to, uh, because that is also not in the pollution. I would have to go through the mountain. I'm probably not going to be doing that. It's more effort than it's worth. But, uh, but yeah, just figured I'd mention it's it's possible. And it's officially summer. It's 58 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll drink to that. All right, defenses and armaments looks to be next. So I think that I am going to go for the power first and then bedrooms afterwards. I think uh, getting power running is more important uh, so that we can get farming going. So the current priority now is set up hydroponics. I don't want our existence to hinge upon whether or not this field out here doesn't get burned down or eaten. It actually already... No, is that a yield? Okay, no, that's a yield. We're good on that front. I also don't think it would be a terrible idea to start uh, excavating the storeroom either. Because we'll have a lot of stuff to store, and I'd rather not have to move it multiple times. What's really cool is there's a new room designation called storeroom if you have enough shelves in it. And then you can also link shelves together so they share the same uh, the same storage settings. So you can set one and link link all and set one rather than have to um, set multiples. Which is quite nice. And more compacted steel. I just keep running into steel. Which makes sense, I mean, given that we're in a giant mountain. So this design here allows me to spread west if I will need to, but I'm going to avoid spreading east because I don't want to get too close to the edge of this mountain and avoid spreading north or anything like that, except for this little section here, which is going to allow me to uh, to vent out heat and, and the like. All right, good. I was going to force you to dig south, but you're already doing it. So then the other thing I could start to do is build the bases with uh, Cam and Sapo. How many tiles to be sapper proof? Um, there is no number that makes you sapper proof. There is sap resistance, but never sapper proof. Sappers... There, there's no amount of mountains that a sapper won't bother to try to plow through if they have to get to you. Um, same with breachers. So the best defense against them is aggression. Getting up in their face and stopping them from uh, messing with you. All right. One of the issues that I have here is I'm a little worried about... Uh, about construction failure due to low light. So I'm going to get a torch lamp up. Right, buddy? 
my little Yoda. He is so happy. Hey, buddy. All right, we're almost at where I'm going to install the power generators. Tech Noir, you're doing a really good job. I'll buy your, your lonesome. So my initial plan is just to have wood fire generate, have a few wood fire generators and batteries to help power up the hydroponics and the grow sun lamp. And then um, we're also going to want an electric stove. I'll just stick that there for now, but electric stove and then also doors so that I can clean up the this room so that it isn't so dirty because a really dirty room means we're going to be vomiting a lot. And I don't really want to vomit. All of our starter meals are poison free. And I like to keep it that way. What's your skill at? Nine? Not bad. You're going the wrong way, Shay. All right, biofuel is done. You guys wanted smithing. And then I'll ask again. If you want machining after smithing, uh, vote for that. One of the advantages of getting machining early is it gives you the ability to make a gas mask. So gas mask protects you from about 80% toxic environment resistance. It doesn't really give you protection um, from being shot in the face or whatever. It's not great protection wise, but at least will protect you from the toxic environment. Um, the really, the good thing is the toxin filtration for the biotic uh, kidneys and lungs. That's when you start to become immune. And that is a um, little, little far off. Not quite there yet. All right, so we're down to 120 meals. We've already eaten like a third, a little over a third. These potatoes are not growing very fast. Shield is doing a really good job uh, smashing this forest to nothing. There's now stumps that you can uh, cut for a little bit more wood once you're done, which is nice. All right, and we're starting to go into the power room. So this is where I was planning on putting power gen. Yeah, and there's finally a lung and a kidney to manufacture in vanilla. No need to, no need to steal ra raiders. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it's in biotech, so you'd need the biotech DLC in order to manufacture them, but it, it exists, and that's huge. Okay, I think it might be a good time to start to relocate some facilities, considering that we're going to have power soon. Luckily, their mood's been kept up by the relationships they're in. Which is very fortunate. Okay. And machining is going to be queued after smithing. Am I using fluid ideology? I am not, no. Um, I have a very basic... I haven't shown this yet, but it's a very basic generic collectivist. There's nothing special about this ideology at all. We're just collectivists. We're a little harmonious family collective. All right, I think I am going to pause the storeroom for now just so that I can make a little bit more power room progress. Making sure that Cam and Sapo are building that. 
Oh, no, you're not. Yeah, you're a builder. Cam should be coming down here and building it in a minute. I'll force her. These are all baseline humans, correct. If you read the lore, I guess the lore doesn't technically say that, but yeah, we're all just baseline human. Every single one is a baseliner. My plan is for the first generation of children to be baseliners, just to be able to demonstrate what a uh, baseliner uh, children raising looks like. And then after the first generation, um, I will be considering uh, implantation and um, xenogening from there on out, you know, for the second generation as a possibility. So I must not, I know why there's a wall there, because it's not allowable. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to RimWorld Doomsday Vault, which streamed live on Twitch October 21st. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams, and it also has a link to Twitch. If you'd like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com also has a link to Discord, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. I hope to catch you in next episode or an upcoming stream. Stay safe out there, fellow vaulter. 